I've always had as chairman of the Commission for European Affairs excellent relations with the with the Irish uh, Parliament, and uh, we've had uh, very very strong relations, and uh, so it's very very something. I'm very very pleased to be here, and um, I'll try and be to be short in my uh, speech because uh, I would like to answer questions and ask questions too. Um, what is the situation before the European elections we have? It's that <coughs> Europe, it was very easy to explain Europe, I would say, up to 15, 15 years ago. <coughs> Europe was a symbol of peace. And uh, everybody agreed on that, and uh, it was in France, of course, the reconciliation with the Germans. Uh, it was uh, a sort of uh, magnificent project of reconciliating countries which had done the war once, one about one against the other, and and then it was the symbol of the reunification of uh, of Europe. It was the symbol of the the fall of the communism, the fall of the uh, the wall, and uh, and so that all the people understood, all the people agreed. But I would say that when you speak now to the young generation, they haven't lived the 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 war. They haven't, the, the, the fall of the communism is something which is behind them. And, um, and so it's more difficult to explain Europe. It's more difficult to explain the interest of Europe. And uh, there's a sort of, uh, uh, in the population, there's a sort of uh, uh, reaction towards Europe. Uh, uh, if there is uh, if there is unemployment, it's the fault of Europe. If there is uh, difficulties, if there are difficulties in the the everyday life, it's the fault of Europe, which is not, of course, because Europe is not really directly concerned by unemployment. And the, 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 it's of course the policies of the countries. Which are in, uh, which have to be studied, uh, but uh, and there's a, there's also this uh, this uh, reflex of the governments, and I would say it can be the the uh, right center right governments as well as the socialist governments. Uh, to accuse Brussels, so easy to accuse Brussels because you don't know who is Brussels. And actually, even now, uh, every day I see ministers who come in the French Parliament and who accuse Brussels, whereas actually they were at the Council of Ministers. They they approve the decision at the Council of Ministers, and once they are in the Parliament, they accuse Brussels, uh, they accuse themselves, I mean. And this is now, and this was true also under our governments. And so we've, we've, we've created a reflex against Brussels, against the, the technocracy, against the... Uh, whereas it's it's not it's not Barroso who decided of the measures. It was it was uh, the ministers, the Council of Ministers, 
And when there's a good news coming from Europe, then uh, you forget to say uh, it's Europe who, who helped us. Uh, I remember Jacques Chirac, my president of the Republic, uh, when we got this fantastic uh, future uh, project of uh, ITER, ITER in the south of France, he said, it's the victory of France. And he completely forgot to say it was the victory of Europe too, because uh, Europe was very... Uh, Europe decided to, to, to support France in this project. And actually, if you remember, uh, Spain wanted this project to be in Spain, and they decided that they would accept uh, that it would be in France. Uh, and so there was a big support of Europe. And then when we have good news, we forget to say it's uh, because of Europe we have this, this good news. So the mood in France, it was the case uh, 10 years ago. The mood in France is not uh, as it was uh, when the European Parliament was created. And uh, it's a sort of, I wouldn't say aggressivity, but sort of indifference, which is not good, of course. And uh, uh, UMP, my party, is going to make a very, very active uh, campaign because we've got to show all the people that Europe is absolutely essential for us. I'm going to try and be objective, although it's not easy when you are in the opposition. Uh, but I would say I'm very concerned. I'm going to give you my, my feeling. I'm very concerned about the Franco-German relation during this year and a half. Uh, to say the truth, uh, when Sarkozy was in power, the Franco-German relation was not easy every day. Uh, but uh, there was a good relation. I mean, the, the, there was discussion, but there was a good relation. When François Hollande arrived in power, I would say his first uh, reaction was to do the, the contrary of Sarkozy and so to have a sort of uh, conflict position with uh, Germany and he said it he said it on the French TV I have a tension amicale uh, a friendly tension with uh, the Chancellor which in diplomatic terms means I have a real conflict uh, relation. <laughs> uh, and after that, it was horrible uh, sentences pronounced by ministers, by, uh, uh, by the president of the National Assembly saying, uh, uh, well, Mrs. Merkel is Bismarck with, uh, uh, she wants to, she wants to, to reign over, over Europe. Uh, and in fact, what happened is that the, the economic situation of Germany was so much better as the economic situation of France that in fact, um, it is difficult to, to have a... Uh, a good relation when the situation is so different. There was about 180 uh, <coughs> billion uh, of uh, d'excédent, of, of surplus, uh, 
of surplus uh, in Germany, and there was an uh, 80 million, million uh, deficit in France, just to say that. But all the, the, the employment is 5% in Germany, it is 10, 10.9 in France. And so uh, France was weakened first by its economic situation. And uh, the, the position of Hollande was to have a sort of confrontation with uh, Mrs. Merkel. And so he tried to have relations with uh, Spain, relations with, uh, with Italy, insisted on growth, and I know this position was appreciated in Ireland, of course, but the problem is that he didn't have the strength of maintaining his position and that, in fact, uh, he accepted what Mrs. Merkel wanted, him, wanted Europe to do. Um, you remember his position during the campaign. He said, I'll never ratify the treaty. Uh, which had been uh, negotiated by uh, Nicolas Sarkozy and Angela Merkel. Well, he ratified it. Uh, he decided to ask his parliament to ratify it. Uh, he said uh, he would uh, like euro bonds to be created. He decided to leave this, uh, uh, this project. And during the budget discussion, he wanted the budget to be more important. And actually, there was a sort of uh, coalition between uh, uh, Angela Merkel and Cameron, <coughs> which we, we had never seen before. And actually, the budget uh, was diminished. Uh, and it was diminished. Uh, uh, we hadn't seen that uh, since the beginning of the European construction such a diminution uh, of the budget. We are going to have <coughs> a double challenge for UMP. I'm talking uh, about uh, my position. We are going to have, of course, to criticize the government. It's the main uh, task of the opposition, <laughs> but we'll have to criticize also the extremes, the extreme right, the extreme left. You don't have this problem here in Ireland because you are reasonable people. <laughs> All the parties are in the center. I would like that. Uh, I would like to have that in France. Uh, we have two parties at the extreme left and the extreme right, uh, which are going to make a lot of uh, um, positions uh, very uh, populist, very nationalist. Uh, they propose to get out of Europe, get out of Euro, uh, have fr frontiers around France and you know, going back to the 18th century, actually. Malthusianism. And um, this, of course, is uh, not appreciated by the French people. And we're going to attack them on that because the Front National has no proposal, nothing, in its program. I've, I've read the program. I've tried to read the program. But there's no proposal in their program. The only proposal which they do is getting out of the Euro, getting out of Europe, and establish frontiers around France so that uh, all the uh, products of uh, other countries can't come to France and France can't export. I mean, it's completely foolish. So we are going to, to attack that as 
we are going to attack the, 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 the French government, but we are going to attack, of course, uh, the position of the extremes. And the extreme right and the extreme left, it's funny, but it's, it's really uh, evident, uh, have the same mo program on Europe. It's exactly the same program in Europe. Whereas I think Europe is at a um, crossroad. Um, we've got to go much further on European uh, uh, issues. We've created the uh, common policy on agriculture, and I think we've got to, to go much further. We, we've got to do a common policy on energy. We've got to do a common policy on industry. We've got to do a common policy on immigration. And we've got to have a cooperation on uh, defense and foreign affairs. So uh, we think uh, it is very important that without the crea uh, creation of new treaties, we can do it without treaties, uh, to develop those common policies which uh, have to be developed and which have to be, to be done. And uh, we've got, of course, to have a more competitive Europe and flexible uh, so that we have the growth and employment. Uh, we have to, of course, um, control the uh, companies which practice uh, uh, the social dumping uh, in the UE. We've got to also defend Europe uh, against uh, companies or products which come from China, which come from India, which come from the States also, when they have um, a position uh, on uh, uh, um, privi uh, giving privilege to, the, to their national comp companies, helping their companies in public markets, well, I don't see why Europe would not uh, do uh, the same if it was the case, so that uh, these countries respect us. Uh, we've got to have a bi-European act, as uh, the Americans have their bi-American act, the Small Business Act, and uh, we've got to, to have a Europe of culture, um, I'm here in a country where culture is very, very important, and I know we share the same uh, interest in culture, and this is to be done with, of course, the youth, the young people, with the Erasmus, etc. We've got to have a clear definition of what we want in Europe. We've decided to, to make Europe uh, with more and more countries. But uh, this uh, situation makes it more and more difficult to, uh, to, uh, to lead. To lead. It's more and more difficult to lead. The more and more we were around the table, the more and more it is difficult. When you discuss with ministers who go to the Council of Ministers, they say it's more and more difficult to work because you have the minister of Malta who speaks for half an hour and then you have 28 countries 
discussing like this. How do you want to work? And the, the, function, the functioning of the commission is not at all the functioning when it, what it was in the beginning, because you know that in the commission, normally, uh, there's a commissioner who presents his report, and then the commission is not a council of ministers, the commission is, has to vote on the report. And each commissioner is important in this vote. But when you get more and more numerous, when you get 28, then there's not this discussion uh, within the commission. So the commissioner comes with his report, and it is most frequently adopted without any um, thinking of each of the commissioners. And so the commission has not the same role it had when uh, it was the law, uh, when the president was the law. And so uh, we've got to define the future of Europe. Uh, we can't go on saying uh, we're going to make uh, Ukraine get into Europe, we're going to make uh, Moldavia get into Europe. Uh, the people, are, are, I'm telling you about France, but they need to know what is the Europe we, we want to, come to build. And there I think we've got to be uh, very, very clear and to say that the Balkans is all are, of course, European countries. But after the Balkans, we stop it. We've got to be very clear, because if we go on integrating other countries, what I said in the beginning, uh, to build a, a, a political Europe, we won't be able to, to, to do it, because uh, if, you, if we are very, very numerous, the political Europe is not is not a possibility we can we can reach, and uh, we have a very clear position on Turkey. We think Turkey is not um, has not to be integrated in Europe. Uh, we think it has to have a partenariat privilégié privileged um, relation, partenariat, uh, with Europe, but not be in Europe, because it would change completely the possibility of uh, building this European, uh, of political, uh, building this political Europe. Um, I haven't spoken about changing the institutions because I think we've done it with Lisbon. The only thing I propose is to have, uh, which is a proposal of Hollande and Mrs. Merkel, to have a stable president of the Eurozone. Because, you know, uh, I think it's very important that we have a stable president for the moment, it changes uh, regularly, and uh, the Eurozone is very important, and we have to have a stable president. And we have uh, to have, and that's a thing I, I tried during my presidency of the Commission, and to have very strong relations with the Parliament, with the European Parliament. The, the national parliaments have to have very strong relation with the European Parliament. And uh, I had uh, uh, very, very important relations with the European Parliament. We even had uh, meetings of my commission with the Commission of the European Parliament, and this was very, very important. Because um, in a country like ours, we have 72 Euro European parliaments. 
We were elected, the, the U, European members of parliament are elected in regions. Uh, there's one region with, which begins from uh, Clermont-Ferrand, Lyon, up to Corsica. How do you want 10 members of parliament to be only well known in this region? It, it's so enormous. Um, and so that's what I think I convinced my party. It's very important that the national members of parliament get into the campaign because they have their constituencies. The constituency is 100,000 people. And, and even I think that the national parliament in France must be much more concerned in European uh, affairs. And so, I don't know if I, has, I have been brief. <laughs> I don't know how long I, I took. Uh, well, it, it should finish. Yeah, more or less. Thank, Thank you. you very much. <laughs> Just to allow time well, for discussion. Uh, what, I, uh, what I want to tell you is that um, I'm really convinced that Europe is very, very important for our citizens, for your citizens. Uh, it's a main issue. Um, and, but we are going to have difficult uh, elections in France. And uh, instead of continuing, uh, I will ask you to ask questions about the elections, and I will answer you. <laughs> <laughs>